Pastor Mai, and welcome to this week's edition of Agenda. I'm Ewan Gornstad. In the coming weeks and months, I hope to continue the perceptive and informative style which Ewan has established, cutting through the spin and rhetoric, and hopefully bringing greater clarity to the issues that matter to you. So get in touch if you have any particular subjects you'd like me to add to your agenda. On this week's programme, outgoing President of Tynwald, Steve Roden, provides some fascinating insights into Manx politics. With 30 years' continuous political service to the island, Steve has a lot to tell us about, including votes for 16-year-olds, the Manx Language School, the Reciprocal Health Agreement, and the tremendous power of Tynwald members. I caught up with Steve last week, just before Lawrence Skelly took over as President. 30 years, uh, it's been a long time, and I think T.E. Brown, the national poet, put it best, the years do come and the years do go, and when you look back, it's all like a puff, happy and over and short enough. One day you're the newest member, and the next day it seems you're you're the longest-serving member and saying goodbye to Tinwald. But it's been a, a real privilege to have served in Tinwald, but particularly in the last five years, to have been president. The highlights for you as a member of Tinwald? Well, there's certain political things that stand out that I'm pleased to have been involved in in various capacities. For example, uh, ten years ago there was a, a huge political battle, if you remember, over the reciprocal health agreement. By my contacts that I had built up in Westminster, a particular MPs, the the battle was really carried to uh, the floor of the Commons itself, and uh, the Isle of Man had been in a hopeless situation. The government had more or less given up on the threat to terminate this health agreement. We engaged political battle basically, and that threat was removed. So that 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 was politically uh, quite a stimulating time. I look back to when I. Uh, was Minister of Education and I had five years in that role and in those days there was more money around and there was terrific school building programme and and school extensions going on Uh, but one of the things I'm very pleased to have been involved with was actually the creation of the Bun School which is a cause I know that is close to your heart Phil Um, but to create a Manx medium primary school in the Isle of Man to give youngsters a a bilingual education A, that's a good thing but B, um, it consolidates an an appreciation I think of unique Manx culture uh, and heritage and the youngsters there I think it's 20 years that school's been going we've had uh, a turnover of four uh, complete uh, primary school uh, careers going on and uh, they, they, they've done uh, very well. It gives a very good education. I think back also perhaps to 2006 um, when votes for 16 and 17-year-olds came in. Um, it's very interesting, the historic parallel to that. In 1881, there was an electoral registration bill before the Keys to extend the franchise to uh, male uh, working class uh, leaseholders, basically, rather than just property holders. There was an MHK called Richard Sherwood um, for Glenn Faber, who, from the floor, moved a very simple amendment to that legislation that wherever the word male appeared in the legislation as in male persons of 21 years or over to be able to vote uh, strike out the word male and that would quite simply then have the effect of giving women the vote and that's exactly what happened and it went through in, in incredibly by um, it was something like 21 votes to or 20 votes to three but back Fast forward to 2006, when the electoral registration bill was coming in, I moved an amendment that wherever uh, 
the word 18 appeared in the legislation, as in voters 18 years of age, strike out 18 and substitute 16. Just to test the political temperature, just to see if there was a, any appetite whatsoever amongst politicians to start a debate about lowering the voting age. Uh, it not not been a particular issue uh, at the time, but I thought, here's a good chance. And my goodness me, that went through with exactly the same majority as votes for women was achieved all those years earlier. So it, it, it shows what an individual politician actually uh, can do if they put their mind to it. And over the years, I've seen others do uh, more significant things possibly um, using their powers individual politicians because under the Isle of Man system the majority stand as independents and in Tinwall they can table a resolution for debate on any policy change they want and it will be debated it's not like Westminster where there's ballots and guillotines and, and all the rest of it um, you will be heard as a politician in the Isle of Man. So all the candidates in September have got tremendous potential power uh, to exercise in their own right or as uh, part of a, a, a collective decision-making. Tinwald is all about politics, and you need politicians, people with political wiles uh, in those roles. How, how would you say the, the last... Tinwald has managed. I mean, they say the art of politics is the art of looking for trouble, finding it everywhere, uh, diagnosing the problem incorrectly, applying the wrong solution, and then finding someone else to blame. <laughs> now, some of some of us take part in those dark arts. Um, I, I I would say um, this this present tin, uh, Tinwell, the one that's just about to finish its parliamentary term, it started in 2016 with a huge turnover of new members. I think 12, about, about half the, the keys were new, and certainly Legislative Council has changed out of all recognition in five years. First of all, the gender balance, uh, and the average age has come down, uh, certainly. Um, the majority are female, and it's ironic that a, a country to be the first in the world to give women the vote, there's never been more than five women at any one time, as there are in the, in the, in the present keys. But uh, that, that situation is has been and, and continues to improve. So I, I, I think my, my observation is there's been, I've seen tremendous characters come and go, individual politicians, heavyweight politicians in the past. And um, some people may say, well, the present Tinwald, by comparison, has been tame in terms of, of debate. And I, I put this down really to uh, there being so many new people f taking probably a couple, good couple of years to find the, their feet. But I, I will say debates are, are very thorough, they're very thoughtful, uh, you can tell by the length of this, the sessions, they're going on uh, longer. Now, of course, length of speech does not equate to quality of speech, as you know, <laughs> Phil, and have seen. Um, and, uh, and I'm as guilty as anyone in that respect. It's, um, however, I, I would say the big change, today's politicians from what I've seen, are playing, if we use a football metaphor, playing the ball, not the man. And there's been far less personal attacks, and uh, it has been the debate has been constructive and and thoughtful, and people have done their homework. You still get a certain amount of people reading from prepared speeches, and they're going to say what uh, whether or not the uh, the debate has moved on, because the art of debating is actually to persuade people. And, and it's terrific to see a well-informed uh, member swaying the court uh, w with their argument. I remember some advice that was given to me years ago when I first came in by Edgar Quine, uh, who, 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 who you'll remember and, and many will remember, a, 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 a very fine debater in my opinion. He said the thing to do is 
uh, acquire an in-depth knowledge of two or three subjects. You need a working knowledge on everything, but don't pretend to be an expert on everything because when you stand up and try and speak on everything, you'll soon be found out. But when you speak on those two or three subjects that you know a a lot about, you'll be listened to with respect uh, and and, um, you can be very influential. And I I think that's probably good advice for for any member thinking of of standing. I'm talking to outgoing president of Tinwald, Steve Roden. And you're listening to Agenda on Manx Radio. Steve has served as Education Minister, Health Minister, Speaker of the House of Keys and President for the past five years. Political engagement with the public has changed quite dramatically with the advent of social media. A a sort of a change, I suppose, there's this uh, general view that we no longer need experts, uh, that opinions trump decades of research for some uh, bizarre reason. Has has Tidmold managed to keep up with the whole way in which uh, the public uh, engage with political debate? You know, this whole idea that a debate can can happen on social media. Well, Tidmold is an institution that historically has always been pretty close to the people it represents, and that's because of the size of the island, the nature of the constituencies. Uh, Elected members have always only ever been a phone call away or a letter uh, away from a constituent, and of course seeing people on on a daily basis as well. That's the historic backdrop. But you're quite right. What has changed is social media, which has changed everything, made communication more immediate. And whereas in the old days, um, you know, a telephone conversation and an undertaking to to look into something or, uh, you know, a written request would be followed up uh, in due course. Now with email and, and, and Facebook and Twitter, the demands are are immediate, um, instant communication and an an instant request uh, for assistance from from your MHK uh, uh, appears to require an instant answer uh, uh, and instant solution, which is not always possible. So I I think we we have to be cautious not to rush into decision-making just for the sake of giving an answer. But on the other hand, um, debate is more intense out in the, the, the social sphere and politicians uh, have got uh, to be clued up and, and ready and willing to respond to it. I, I'm old-fashioned, I'm an analog politician in a, in a digital age and, and have actually always found it quite difficult to uh, uh, the, the, the technical side of things but most members now it's absolutely essential but the other good thing that has happened in recent years is that on behalf of the public elected members uh, have more um, opportunity uh, and ways of holding the executive to account we started a system of standing committees in, in Tinwald, parliamentary committees which shadow the work of, of ministers, not on an ad hoc select committee basis, um, as used to be the case, or on a narrower basis with the Public Accounts Committee, which has been there for a long time, but to have uh, c- committees of Tinwald members um, bringing in um, ministers and chief executives Uh, to give evidence in public and also, importantly, and this is the point, to invite members of the public in to give evidence. So I think the communication with the public um, has got better uh, in that respect. And I certainly have noticed um, uh, a greater willingness on the part of the public to engage directly with with politicians, whether it's demonstrations on a Tuesday outside the House of Keys, which is a very, very good thing. And, and, and of course, the, the public themselves can be a, a, a very rich so, uh, source of input 
uh, into policy development uh, and, and, and legislation. And we've seen that with some of the, the private members' legislation, the abortion reform bill, uh, which was, was a magnificent um, uh, effort by uh, an individual independent member. It wasn't a government initiative, uh, actually, to take action on an, a long overdue uh, reform and so I come back again, individual politicians out who are not necessarily working within government can really make a difference. Over the course of the last 20 years, um, there hasn't really been any significant reform of Tynwald. Um Prior to that, the, the, you know, the 20 or 30 years prior to that, there were significant changes, quite significant uh, and, and fundamental change had occurred. So presumably... Uh, as there has been no significant change for the last 20 years, everything in the garden is rosy. Would that be fair? Uh, Tinwald is ever-changing. It's a timeless institution, and it has kept itself uh, up-to-date in the way it operates. A thousand years ago, it was meeting in St John's. It was meeting in the the medieval castle, Castle Russian, survived the English Civil War uh, when the island was at real risk of being absorbed simply as a county of England. Uh, But uh, it survived the period of almost direct colonial rule from from London uh, until... What, the last 50, 70 years? The story then, since then, has been one of steady constitutional advance for the Isle of Man. Now, if um, the role of the governor has completely changed from being the, the powerhouse and the holding the purse strings of the island right up until living memory and, in fact, to presiding over Tinwald itself till 1990, probably the island has gone as it had far as it can constitutionally short of outright independence. Uh, And and that is where we're at on the constitutional spectrum. Now, as far as as Tinwald is concerned, it has adapted. It's become, certainly a legislative council has become more democratic over the last hundred years when all its members were crown appointments we only have two uh, two crown appointments left the the attorney general who doesn't have a vote and the lord bishop the other members now uh, have uh, o- over the years uh, been elected by the keys uh, as an electoral college there are arguments make it directly elected by the public but To me, that would disturb the careful balance within Tinwald where the elected branch, the House of Keys, elected by the public, has superiority. And the most that LegCo can do is delay, give pause for reflection or or a second bite at the charity, but, but it cannot block the will of the Keys. And that careful balance of power uh, works. Now, the last 18 months has seen Tenwold change its procedures considerably because of the COVID uh, situation. Having met physically for hundreds of years, <clears throat> Douglas, Castletown Douglas, uh, it was meeting uh, remotely and virtually uh, in order to pass the hundreds of pieces of necessary legislation required under the Emergency Powers Act and the, uh, the, the Public Health Act to keep the Manx public safe. And it uh, uh, used the the modern technology to do that. Um, As we move forward, the use of that technology for remote distance uh, in uh, communication with particularly with committee work and expert witnesses from, say, off island uh, that we may want input into our legislative scrutiny or policy making uh, that 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 becomes possible and, and let's not forget we absolutely pioneered voice recognition technology for hansard recording the public record of, of debates so we're a happy blend of ancient and modern so forget about the individual politicians at any one time who inhabit Tinwald. We're birds of passage. I'm on my way out. There'll be a lot of new people on their way in in September. That, that, that's a good thing. But the institution of Tinwald is timeless and it's priceless. 
and, and I've all, always said that, that Tinwald, as an institution, is the most precious asset the island has. And, and the reason I say that is because it gives us the ability to legislate for ourselves, whether it, it's for COVID or international tax standards, or housing, domestic matters, whatever it is, if we weren't able to legislate for ourselves, but instead simply sent one MP to Westminster, as does the Isle of Wight and other islands like Orkney and Shetland or the Isle of Skye, one MP, part of the UK, uh, Tinwald has kept the island uh, a, 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 as a nation, if not a sovereign state, a nation and legislatively self-governing has stood the people over the years in very good stead. You don't hear much about the Isle of, uh, Isle of Wight shipping register or the, 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 the uh, 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 Isle of Skye finance sector. Actually, to govern ourselves and legislate for ourselves is the key to th this island moving forward and the key to being a successful economy and hopefully uh, a good place socially uh, to live. Uh, Tinwald invited campaigner Alan Shea to be the guest of honour at uh, Tinwald Day. That's uh, quite a significant uh, recognition. Yes, um, this Tinwald Day <clears throat> was a little bit different in that we were very restricted in the number of uh, overseas visitors we could have as, as official guests because our official guests always come from across, outside people looking in, taking away a good impression of the Isle of Man. This year we wanted to have a number of, of on-island guests, uh, people who had been held prominent positions in the past, uh, former lieutenant governor, former chief ministers and so on. Uh, but yes, we had Alan Shea uh, as a guest uh, this year and in, in 1991, and, and I remember uh, when he took that petition up to Tinwald Hill on, on, on gay rights, um, symbolically, 30 years later, I, th I think that very much shows how the island has changed. And it's changed so much in, what, 34 years that uh, I, I've lived in the island. When I came in the uh, mid to late 80s, the island had virtually no money. Um, we've got 1.6 billion plus in reserves at the moment. You could count on the fingers of one hand the number of millions government had to play with in those days. And social legislation was long in o o uh, overdue for reform when you consider we had there was capital punishment, judicial corporal punishment still in the statute book. The age of, I mean, homosexuality was a criminal offence. Uh, and, and there was other long overdue for reform social legislation. And the attitudes, social attitudes were, were, were changing. I mean, something quite... Quite simple. Who, who, who would? Have, I would never have dreamed that somebody with my accent uh, would one day become president of, of Tinwald. I hope you enjoyed listening to outgoing president of Tinwald, Steve Roden, who has played a significant part in Manx politics for three decades. He was certainly an inspiration and great support to me when I was in the House of Keys, and I'm sure he will be missed by the current Timwald members. I've got an exciting political discussion planned for next week, but please get in touch if you have any ideas for our future agenda. That's all for tonight's programme. You can listen again to the show on Manx Radio's website as a podcast, which is also available on Spotify. But for now, go to Mayu. Thanks for listening. <laughs>